in many folks' minds, the pinnacle of the finishing trade is the pad polish, uh, known in our time as a French polish. And we've, we've gone over some of the materials of making a, a fabric pad for polishing. In my case, I'm using wool as the core uh, repository, if you will. And this is some of the uh, polishing varnish that I've prepared already. And I'm just going to charge or load this up with some, some of the varnish and just squeeze it so that it's fairly well distributed throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the ball of, of wool. Um, with some finishes, you do have to be really concerned about issues of toxicity and safety. And uh, as a toxicologist is bound to tell you, uh, the dose makes the poison. In this particular case, that which we would be exposed to is, is grain alcohol. I, I use uh, pure liquor alcohol so that to the extent that I'm being exposed to anything, it is pure liquor and not a whole lot. Um, my pad is a little wet. You can see that my hand is, is pretty wet. Um, but we're just going to work the surface over a little bit uh, to build that, that finish up just a little bit more. The pad is really uh, a whole lot wetter than we need it right now. I'm just going to kind of sop some of it off into a rag so that I can uh, get it a little bit. I'm actually going to squeeze this out a little bit. It's, it's really a much wetter than I had hoped. But uh, we'll get it there. Uh, and then I'm going to dab just one little dab of, of oil on the surface to uh, This oil is walnut oil. You can use linseed oil. You can use uh, baby oil, mineral oil, paraffin oil. Any of those oils are fine. You just don't want something that dries really fast, and you don't want something that's going to hang around forever. Uh, so, so engine oil would not, be, would not be what you want. But we're getting closer here, and I'll, I'll see what I, can, what I can do. It's a little bit wet, but we're going we're gonna to eventually um, remove material out and I'm just rotating over this with with the pad which is really quite wet now more than I really want it to be but it'll dry out and when you're doing this as you get started you sort of get in the habit of just exhaling out on the surface to blow it dry so if you think about how many times I'm going over any particular area with my pad depositing varnish on the surface, uh, it can be many, many hundreds or thousands of times over a specific area uh, as I'm going. And in a, in a moment, I'm going to turn it up, and I hope you can see me working in the specular reflection so that it almost looks like there's nothing going on. Uh, but it is, it is doing something. I'm just going to put a box behind this to hold it up. It's a little bit difficult for me to uh, work that way. I have a, a box right here I can use for propping this up. And maybe this will be a little bit better. I don't know. We'll see. But the, the, um, the pad is really quite sticky to the surface. If I didn't keep it moving, it would glue itself down. And I'm certainly going to have a thumbprint where I'm holding on to it. But uh, in order for you to see what I'm doing, in order for you to see what I'm seeing, we have to have it sort of in a peculiar, a peculiar way here. And it's, it's getting to where if I didn't have the oil and the surface, it would be a little bit difficult to move, move the, uh, the pad around. 
but I'm going to keep on moving it until actually after it has uh, uh, lost its, its tackiness. And I'm just going to keep on patting because it's still continuing to pull out uh, material from the, sur from the pad and depositing it on the surface. Uh, and you can, you can do this until the cows come home and the farmer chases them. You just keep on doing this until you're satisfied with the end result. And since the surface is fairly well engorged with solvent, it's a bit swollen. And as time goes on, you know, over, you know, leave it overnight, this actually becomes shinier as, as it loses the solvent that's, that's in here and shrinks, shrinks back to uh, a much more condensed surface. And I'm at the point now where it's just a matter of redundancy and endurance as to how long I want something to work. Uh, you might occasionally have to charge your pad a little bit more uh, with some more solvent. I tend to, uh, when, I'm, when I'm recharging a loaded pad, I just place my bottle against it and, and decant it that way just to put a little bit more uh, into the surface so I, can, so I can get it working a little bit more. But this is pretty much as far as I'm going to go. And it, remember, this is not a, a grain-filled surface. If we had grain filled it, it would be, uh, you would lose almost all of the wood character. Uh, we didn't do that on this one, but you still get to learn the technique. And even so, uh, the surface is really quite, quite, quite lovely, uh, which again just reiterates point number one of the magic six points is that if you prepare the surface, and then uh, the later point, working with your tools skillfully, you're going to have perfect finishing. And with that, we're going to just draw it to an end. Uh, and so this would be a pad polish on a non-grain filled surface. Still quite lovely in its own way. <laughs>